Speaker recognizes Representative Legrand, who has a tie on. Madam Speaker, I know the hour is, is growing late and we've all spent minutes in this chamber today. Um, so I will keep it short. Um, Madam Speaker, I'm a permission to speak to the whole pack, to the package, if we can loosely define it as package. Sure. My colleagues know me. This is, I'm, I'm concerned about democracy. So this is gonna be another democracy speech. Um, we're, here to, I mean, we're, we're here today and we have at least two or three bills up about voting rights. And I want to express some maybe hopelessly naive sentiments here, but um, you'll, you'll pardon me, Madam Speaker, I hope. I'm concerned that as the issue of voting rights progresses and the issue of voting and election integrity progresses, that our two parties and this body are going to become at risk increasingly of talking past each other. Now, I don't think I'm imputing motives by saying that or impugning motives. Um, I do think that there's always the possibility if we have a ripe target that people can get really excited about, that both sides can whip their bases up into a frenzy and act as though Rome is burning and come up with reasons why this issue is something that we all have to, you know, motivate our bases to give us money for or whatever. But I do want us to, to think for a second about the real problem we may be facing of talking past each other. So to frame this, I want to talk about zebras, blue cheese, and engineering. When I was in law school, I had a professor who gave the anecdote of a man who was standing on the street corner and he was snapping his fingers compulsively and shaking his head. And somebody came up to him and he's in the middle of Manhattan. And someone comes up and says, what are you doing? He said, I'm keeping away the zebras. And the guy says, we're on the island of Manhattan. There are no zebras here. And he says, see how well it's working? The other thing I want to talk about is blue cheese. It is possible to have 40% of our population believe that the moon's made out of blue cheese. We may not think that's right. We may think they are badly misinformed. It would have significant impacts on our space program if 40% of our population did in fact think the, world, the moon was made out of blue cheese. So, and the final thing I wanna talk about is engineering. It is permissible in, in engineering terms to try to figure out how to fix something before it breaks, to anticipate possible avenues of failure and be concerned about them. So I hope that we all agree. And, I, I'm, and, and the last thing I'll say is this, in, as by way of introduction, call me a fool, call me a tr crazy dreamer, but I trust every single one of you until you give me a reason to not trust you. I completely trust the integrity of the representative from the 63rd district. I believe that what he said a few minutes ago was in fact what he intended to say a few minutes ago. I don't think that he had some secret hidden agenda. I don't think he was lying and I don't think he was shading his concerns. So I don't want to talk past his concerns or minimize them. I think everyone in this house can properly be concerned that we not feed paranoia. If there was a grow, if 40% of our state thought that the moon was made out of blue cheese, we would, we would have a problem, but, it's, but, there's, but there's two potential problems. One is misinformation, but the other is active paranoia. We have to be careful as we talk about election integrity, we do not feed a paranoid narrative. But it is also true that we are in a real place where 40% of the country has deep concerns about election integrity. And whether or not, and I firmly believe that our elections are fair and secure, but that does not stop me being concerned about whether we can address new, emerging, ongoing threats to that integrity. And so I do think that this body should be thinking, what if? What if Repu uh, uh, Russians decided that they wanted to hack our system? What if? Um, there was a massive disinformation program on, on new media platforms. What if all of these things, and we should frankly be having a conversation that involves not just disinformation and not just paranoia, but thinking about how to actually acknowledge that 
Integral, integral elections are perhaps the most important thing we have in this country. And so I do not ever want to stand up and say that I oppose legislating things that are good ideas, like not connecting our computers to the internet. Now, it may be that we don't already do that, but it's, a, it's not a bad idea to say that we shouldn't prohibit that. That's a very reasonable thing, given the circumstances, in my opinion. I don't want to stand up and say that we shouldn't keep ballots uh, and retain information about elections for certain periods of time. I don't want to vote against that because the idea came from another side of this chamber. But what I don't want us to do is talk past each other. So I think that we have to look for ways to examine the issue of election integrity carefully with the goal of robust participation in our democracy. So I think we have to look for things that will increase turnout, increase participation, but also increase voter safety. And that is, I think, what we should all be looking at imaginatively and proactively, not reactively, and not in a way as so as to stir up fear or paranoia in our populace. Thank you, Madam Speaker.